Hi, everyone. Welcome to the sixth online Spintronics seminar. Thank you for joining us. This is Xin Fan from University of Denver. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Li Jun Zhu uh, received his PhD at the University of Chinese Academy of Science <coughs> in 2014, studying growth and the transport of perpendicularly magnetized materials. He then worked as a postdoc at Martin Luther University for one and a half years on time-resolved MOOC for studying ultra-fast spin dynamics. After that, he joined Cornell University as a postdoc and has since worked on spin hall related spin transport in magnetic multilayers. Um, Dr. Drew, please go ahead with our talk. Thank you, Xin and uh, Carol, for organizing this uh, online spin training seminar. Uh, today, I am I'm going to present our recent progresses on the understanding of intrinsic spin hall effect in planet based system. My title is Maximizing Spin Hall Ratio of Platinum Trade Off Between the Intrinsic Spin Hall Connectivity and the Carry Lifetime. Uh, let's think about Let's consider about the standard spin hall talk process. Uh, a charge current in the spin hall layer can gener generate a spin current. This spin current can partially transmit through the interface and exert a torque on the uh, ferromagnetic layer. In this case, the damping like torque efficiency per current density is the spin transparency of the interface times the spin hall ratio of the spin hall material. The interface spin transparency is usually less than unit because uh, there is a spin backflow and spin memory loss. The spin backflow term can be estimated from drift diffusion analysis, and the spin memory loss term can be estimated from uh, its linear uh, dependence on the interface spin of the coupling. Please refer to the three papers for more details. A damping like spin orbital can be very useful for new technologies. For example, uh, uh, Lu Xiao uh, demonstrated the first three terminal and magnetic tunnel junction uh, based on platinum several years ago when he was still at Cornell. Recently, based on gold platinum, we uh, demonstrated energy efficient magnetic memory. Uh, that can be operated uh, and sub analytic and time scale. Here shows a phase diagram uh, for the gold platinum anterior device. A speed diamond light torque can also um, drive uh, uh, domain work based uh, logic operated devices, uh, for example, in this nature paper recently. Diamond light talk uh, can also excite uh, magnetic, magnetization dynamics that can be used to generate terahertz or gigahertz emissions. For a practical spin of talk technology, a key basis is an energy efficient, high endurance and integration friendly spin current generator. Here, energy efficient means the diamond light talk efficiency per current density should be high and the resistivity must be uh, low. The high endurance means the resistivity should be low and the material should be uh, uh, stable against uh, electrical immigration. The integration friendly means the material should be thermally stable and chemically stable and it should be easy to be integrated with MTJ and the CMOS circuit. Such as being current generator still remains uh, a bigger challenge. Platinum is a high endurance and integration friendly spin current generator because it has a low resistivity uh, ranging from 30 to 50 microm centimeter for films. And uh, platinum is also semi-stable and chemically stable in oxygen, acid, and base. And it also allows for sputtering deposition on top of setting oxide surface. And it's, it, it, it's also com compatible with uh, high quality iron chrome bore MTGs. 
the surface of platinum can be also atomically smooth, as you can see from this uh, cross-sectional TM image. But the damping light torque efficiency provided by platinum is relatively low. It ranges from uh, 0.15 to 0.22, depending on the resistivity, as determined by harmonic response uh, measurement by uh, different groups. So pure platinum is not very energy efficient. It's relatively low damping light torque efficiency, namely uh, the energy efficiency and the integration density of the device because it requires larger transistors to supply a large right current. In this circumstance, we might think about alternative spin current generators, for example, tuberous insulators. Uh, BSV Senna and BSV uh, Antimony have been recently reported to have spin hole ratios that can be even larger than one in some cases. This is very attractive. But we then realize that topological insulators are also suffering from a lot of other problems from device point of view. For example, they are very resistive. Uh, the spot of BSPS antimony has a resistivity uh, of 500 to 1,000 micro centimeter. A BSPS thin line has 13,000 micro centimeter. And they are also chemically unstable, for example, in air, including the air in the clean room. And uh, they are structurally very rough. Here I show an uh, example for MBE group bismuth cyanide uh, from a uh, reported from a uh, Kanwan's group from USLA. You can see uh, there are a lot of triangle structures and there are a lot of terraces. If you do a line scan, you can easily get several nanometer variation in the cyclics, even in a very small scale. The spot of the tubular insulated films are also mm, pretty rough. The roughest is typically several nanometers. In addition, these materials are seemingly unstable. For example, this with the antimony melts at 275 C which is too low for, uh, for integration with the uh, same circuit MGJ. And uh, this same night, uh, sublimates and there's a same temperature as reported by Borja in his nanolator paper. So these properties are very challenging for device endurance and power efficiency and for integration with CMO circuits and for making MTJs on top of such materials. So we have to go back to platinum and uh, think about two, two questions. Can platinum be made uh, energy efficient? If so, how and why and to what limit diamond efficiency can be enhanced? Since the pioneering works uh, more than 10 years ago, platinum have been studied uh, intensively uh, with um, many different techniques. But so far, the dominant mechanism and the aptitude of spin hole conductivity of platinum remains in dispute. Serious predict that there should be a characteristic variation of the dominant mechanism with the carrier lifetime. As you can see uh, from this figure, in the ultra clean limit, the extrinsic skew scattering and side jump uh, can be very important. In clean limit, the extrinsic uh, mechanism uh, get uh, suppressed and in the intrinsic mechanism dominates the spin hole connectivity. Then in the dirty limit, the intrinsic spin hole connectivity started to decrease rapidly with the shortening carry lifetime. Talak and I have specified the boundary for the dirty and clean limit is uh, about uh, uh, the 30 micro centimeter. So most spotted platinum film will be in the dirty limit. However, exper experimentally, this uh, variation has always been ignored and has never been identified. 
the predicted magnitude of the spin hole connected radio platinum also varies from 0.4 to 4.5, 10 to the fifth, h bar over 2e per meter, which is more than factor 10 disagreement. The experimentally reported uh, the um, values varies from 3 to 18, 10 to the fifth, which is again a more than, uh, uh, which is again a very strong disagreement. Here we try to identify the dominant mechanism and uh, the magnitude. First, we uh, uniformly dog platinum with NGO molecules and introduce strong impurity scattering. In this way, we can tell the electrical conductivity and carry life at time tau. And you can see from this figure, the mirrored electrical conductivity and the mirrored parent spin hole conductivity are tilled significantly with doping level. If we plot the mirrored apparent spin hole conductivity as a function of electrical conductivity, we will find the data points fall in the dirty limit. And uh, the, its uh, magnitude decreases uh, as uh, shortening carry lifetime or reducing uh, electrical conductivity. Importantly, its magnitude is already larger than all the uh, reported uh, expected value from series. If we further correct for the uh, spin transparency due to the spin backflow, according to the drift diffusion analysis, we can determine the internal spin hole conductivity as plotted with the solid triangles here. We can see that the internal spin hole conductivity decreases rapidly with shortening carry lifetime, which uh, signifies the dominant orange of intrinsic spin hole effect of plat. In the clean limit, the spin hole conductivity can be really high. It can reach around 1.8 to 10 to the 6 h bar over 2e per mole per meter. So we argue that available series are considerably underestimate the magnitude of intrinsic spin hole conductivity of platinum. Here we can ex exclude the skew scattering. Skew scattering expect uh, spin hole conductivity to scale linearly with uh, electrical conductivity. But that is not what, what we experimentally see. Sign jump expect spin hole conductivity to scale uh, in proportion to the square of the resistivity ratio. Here, rho x, x0 is the residual resistivity and zero temperature. And rho xx is the resistivity and room temperature. We found that the platinum MGO alloy has larger resistivity ratio, but much smaller spin hole conductivity compared to that of platinum. So sign jump can be also excluded. In addition to uh, impurity scattering, we are also able to tell the carry lifetime by the strong interfacial scattering uh, from the half limb insertion layers and the titanium insertions. Here we plot platinum and geo data in uh, black uh, triangles and apply the half and half limb data in uh, red squares and the plant titanium multilayer data in, in blue circles. You will see all the data from the different uh, uh, material system overlap with each other very well, which again confirms uh, characteristic variation of the intrinsic spin hole conductivity with the carry lifetime. From the X-ray diffraction measurement, we found the platinum FCC 101 peak intensity varies slowly with increasing titanium insertions, but it varies strongly uh, with uh, increasing half insertions which indicates that the disorder of the two systems um, varies very differently 
And we also found the strain, uh, whereas uh, remarkably and in opposite uh, ways for half immune session and titanium immune sessions. So the disorder and strain is various in different ways for the different uh, system. But we found this difference makes no difference, makes no difference, doesn't influence the scanning of spin hole conductivity with the conductivity. This indicates that in the, the intrinsic spin hole conductivity is very robust to string and moderate disorders, which is consistent with our expectation that the barrier curvature of the platinum FCC analysis is very stable. So why is this finally important? We know the spin, uh, for the spin hole effect, the damping isotopic efficiency per current density is the spin transparency times spin hole angle. And the spin hole angle is the spin hole conductivity over the electrical conductivity. This means if we can optimize the trade-off between the spin hole conductivity and the uh, electrical conductivity, we will be able to maximize the spin hole ratio and the damping rate of efficiency for the platinum-based system. And so we plot here the measure of the damping light talk efficiency shows a peak with a, a shortening carrier lifetime or reducing electrical conductivity. This peak is uh, um, in between 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And the corresponding spin hole ratio also shows a peak around here with the amplitude of 0 0.8. We, we think that this, uh, this peak value of 0 0.8 is the up limit for the spin hole uh, ratio of platinum based system if it's achieved by whatever approach that reduces carry lifetime tau. Here we also establish uh, three uh, optimized spin hole metals platinum gel alloy platinum halfing multilayers and platinum titanium multilayers. The spin hole ratio for the different system are around 0.8 and the stamping line total efficiency per current density varies from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 depending on the resistivity of the system. Here I want to point out uh, the above analysis is not affected by Rochebar effect because the latter is negligible uh, in our samples we study here. I have three piece of, uh, pieces of evidence. First, as I showed previously, diamond electrical efficiency scales closely with conductivity, which is clearly a sign of bulk spin hole effect. Secondly, the diamond electrical efficiency scales with the heavy metal cyclics. Here I show two examples, one is platinum, one is gold platinum. You can say the, the mirror damping light of efficiency is uh, a relative constant at the large when, when the heavy metal cyclic is large and it decreases towards zero when the cyclic is decreased towards zero, which is a clear uh, box spin, uh, the spin diffusion behavior of the box spin hole effect. Uh, the third uh, piece of uh, evidence is we found the measured damping light torque efficiency uh, reduces with uh, the interfacial uh, spin of the coupling strength of, uh, of the platinum cobalt interface. We uh, attribute this reduction to spin memory loss due to interfacial spin of the scattering. But in any case, if this reduction includes any contribution from rush talk, then this rush talk will be negative and become negligible when the interfacial spin up coupling is reduced to be a very small value, as is in the case for the angular heavy metal ferromagnetic to interface. So we can safely say the rush by effect uh, is negligible in our samples we study here. 
Now let's consider about the practical impact of these findings. Compared with the conventional uh, heavy metals, beta tungsten, platinum, and uh, low resistivity platinum, this platinum based heavy metal alloys and multilayers uh, have a very large uh, diamond attack efficiency and a relatively low resistivity at the same time. Then, if we calculate the power consumption for a spin torque MRAM device based on this materials uh, by taking into account the current shooting into the heavy metal, so that the power is actually the total current squared time, uh, times the, re the resistivity of the spin hole material, then we'll find the platinum-based heavy metals and multilayers uh, provides the lowest energy uh, consumption compared with uh, conventional heavy metals and uh, tubular insulates. For example, it's only 1% of the spotted PCB satellite device as reported in 2008. We also um, fabricated a uh, spin talk MRAM device using the optimal platinum halfling multilayers, and we achieve a critical switching current of 73 microamp and uh, switching current density of 3.6 megaamp per square centimeter, both, way, uh, both of which are the lowest among the reported devices. From the uh, critical switching current density, we uh, determine the lower bound for the diamond atop efficiency to be 0 0.3, which is in, go in, in good consistency with the harmonic response measurement. So here's my summary. We establish the dominant mechanism and the aptitude of the spin hot conductivity of platinum-based system. We achieve the larger scale tuning of carry lifetime by impurity doping and ultrasound insertions. And we provide the first experimental identification of the characteristic trade off between the intrinsic spin hole conductivity and carrier lifetime. And for the kidney name is platinum, the spin hole conductivity is 1.8 10 to the 6 h bar over 2 e power per meter, which is considerably unestimated by the available, the available series. And it's by a factor of four like that. Technically, uh, this result indicates that the joint intrinsic spin hole connectivity and its trade off with the current time tau allows to maximize spin hole ratio by shortening the current lifetime. But there is an upper limit of 0.8 for the spin hole ratio of platinum based system. And uh, 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 from this study, we also uh, established three uh, spin hole metals, platinum gel alloy, platinum halfling multilayers, and platinum titanium, which combines a large diamond atomic efficiency with a relative, relatively low uh, resistivity. So we're happy to collaborate and let this physics and materials benefit the spin uh, opportunities and research and technologies. So finally, I want to acknowledge uh, 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 my, co uh, my supervisor, Professor Berman and Danroff, uh, and all my previous colleague, Shenjie, for the help with the spin talk experiment. And uh, I also want to thank my brother, uh, Professor Rujun Zhu from Shanxi Normal University and uh, Professor Manin Sui from Beijing University of technology for the help with the scanning TM imaging. I also want to thank the ground support. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, thank you, Li Jin, for the very nice talk. Let's send a round of virtual applause by clicking the reactions button at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And if you have any question, please use the raise hand options you can click the participants at the bottom of your screen and then click raise hand in the popped out menu.
Okay, can I ask the, the, the first question? Mm -hmm. uh, for most of the materials you study, uh, have you measured the spin diffusion length for, 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 for yes. the different materials? Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, for plant-based system, yeah, spin diffusion length is around one nanometer or so. It depends on the uh, resistivity of the material. So, uh, uh, the, resist the spin conductance is usually a constant for these materials. So, resistivity times spin diffusion length will be constant. So, the larger resistivity, the smaller spin diffusion length. So I see. It's around one nanometer. Oh, yeah, about. Oh, uh, could it be? Yeah, okay, about. I see. Yeah. I see. Thank you. And uh, um, you're probably aware of that. I think the, in the uh, past couple of years, there are papers reporting the platinum spin, di spin diffusion lens can actually be as large as eight nanometers. Yeah, that's and, from uh, inverse spin, how you experiment that. That's right. Right. So th if, if, if that was true, um, does it, uh, you know, how, how, how do we consolidate these two different uh, results? Um, um, if the spin diffusion is really that long, does it mean that the, uh, the, the spin orbit torque uh, may not come from the spin Hall effect? Or was, uh... Uh, that's a very good question. So uh, we, we, we actually discussed this problem, uh, uh, this, uh, yeah, this, this problem in our uh, PIO paper last year. Uh, we, if we can say about spin diffusion analysis, then there is a limit. Uh, so the, uh, let's say, um, if is the spin diffusion length is that long, like eight nanometer, then you will get a very small spin conductance because spin conductance is one over resistivity times spin diffusion length, then it will conflict with the spin diffusion analysis. So uh, there is some confliction. Uh, so we think spin diffusion length in those uh, experiments for some reason it's uh, overestimated. Okay, so you, so you think it should be uh, one around one nanometer is a correct yeah. spin diffusion. Okay. Yeah, okay. we uh, we have discussion in I don't know. Uh, you can look at this PIO paper. So I discussed that you know um, you know the, including your question like why how the spin diffusion cannot be that long. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Jun Wen, uh, please go ahead with your question. Hello. Thank you for your nice talk. I have a question Hi. about the spin hole efficiency or the spin hole angle you measured. Uh, mm -hmm. The reported value for the spin hole efficiency is your measured is one order higher than the reported value. Like in Lucha's paper, he reported 0. 0.056, something around that value. And your report is 0. 0.8, is one order higher. So what is the reason cause such larger spin hole efficiency? That's, that's an excellent question. Um, I have an answer. So when Lu you know, Lucha reported the value of 0. 0, 0, 0. 0.06, like that, the resistivity for that sample was 20 micro-centimeter. So the, uh, uh, I should have an equation. Okay, uh, so. Uh, so I have, I have this equation, I guess I should show you, then you will understand this better. Okay, so if you look at this equation, the spin hole ratio or diamond of efficiency is proportional to spin hole conductivity 
over conductivity or spin hole conductivity times resistivity. Mm -hmm. So when Lucia reported the spin hole ratio of 0 0.06, the, the resistivity was only 20 microcentimeter. Mm -hmm. Here for my platinum, I I as I have some, some method approach to increase the spin the, the resistivity to 50 microcentimeter, which means you can increase the diaphragm torque efficiency by a factor of you know three or almost three. So then you will have a much larger spin torque efficiency. And also I have a table here. So if you look at the numbers from different groups, you know, they report spin spin hole ratios for the platinum uh, based mm -hmm. system would be from 0 0.15 to 0 0.22. Like the last one is from the Charles group, MIT. So it can be really high. It depends on two things, what's the resistivity and what's the spin transparency of the interface, how well you can you control the interface. That means that, uh, you know, uh, how large is spin backflow, which means, you know, uh, the spin backflow is influenced by the thickness of the platinum and it's, re it's spin efficiency of the platinum. They say activity is, uh, then you get more complete uh, uh, spin transmission. And also if you have spin memory loss, that will also influence the spin transparency. So you can have a very different number for spin, the diamond torque efficiency. This is kind of, you need to engineer your material to control the spin transparency. Okay, That's thank you very much. Answer. Yeah. Uh, Professor Jiang Xiao, please go ahead with your question. Hi, uh, Li Jun, uh, thanks Hi. for the talk. You know, um, you mostly are uh, concentrating on the platinum system. And does your conclusion change if you use the tantalum based system and uh, also once you have a perpendicular magnetization? Uh, I don't think the direction of the, the magnetization influences the conclusion first. Uh, because as soon as your, you know, uh, magnetization is perpendicular to the spin polarization of the spin current, it should be similar. Then if this is, yeah, here I'm considering about the platinum system. If according to the server, you know, for titanium or tungsten, you should have a similar behavior. And uh, but in that case, from material point of view, it's hard to choose the resistivity of titanium or tungsten in a large scale. So okay. it's hard to experimentally can, uh, observe this variation. But for platinum, it's much easier. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, can you go through your argument? Uh, uh, basically, you say only spin hole dominate in your. <laughs> in your uh, uh, experiment. Yeah, so uh, uh, first, yeah, spin hole should have this deep, this uh, behavior and the way of observing it. And uh, I think you are this, we are asking this uh, question. What is that? Okay, this one. So, okay, and go through it again. So we know for rush by effect, we would expect uh, that the torque is not sensitive to the, the resistivity of the heavy metal layer or the thickness of the heavy metal layer. But, for, uh, but what we say is strongly depends on the resistivity of the heavy metal layer and the thickness of heavy metal layer. So it's dominantly, so it's it's very consistent with the spin hole effect, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's inconsistent with rush by effect. And from this variation, we say that the most part at least should be from the spin hole effect of the platinum. And then if you look at the spin of the coupling strength dependence, 
we found for platinum cobalt system, if we knew the same we could choose the uh, interferon spin of coupling uh, by a lot. Then we found the measured spin top efficiency actually reduces uh, as you increase the spin, uh, the interferon spin of the coupling. So we, we think this is spin memory loss, which means you know the spin into the lattice. But if you can say this can also be a rush by effect, then mm -hmm. this rush by effect should be a negative torque. And it should be become negligible when the interferon spin of coupling becomes small, as you see in the as group sample. So the rush by effect is if there is some, there should be very small effect and negligible. So this means the spin high effect being the dominant mechanism. Right, thanks. Yeah. All right, is any other question? Uh, hi, Lijun. Uh, oh, hi. I, uh, this is Mohendra from Stanford University. Uh, uh, I have a quick question here. So, um, so how does this spin diffusion length affect the uh, power dissipation? Uh, influence what? The power dissipation. Uh, you have uh, the current something and then um, if you have a higher uh, conductivity, then the current sending would be lower. And the uh, system becomes. Uh, you mean yeah. the energy efficiency of the device? Uh, you mean spin diffusion is right? Okay. Yeah. Th so, does does spin diffusion then play a role on the power dissipation? Yeah, that's that's a a good question. Uh, So if you look at this, so first, first the this is power, which is the the the, the sum of the current in the spin hole channel and in the free layer. Uh, this you know, square this current as in times the resistivity of the this layer. Then. Then the stamping like torque efficiency is dependent on the thickness of the heavy metal. Then if you have different spin diffusion lengths, you will have you will need different thickness to get the, the same amount of damping like torque efficiency. So the, the smaller spin diffusion lengths, the, the smaller thickness you need to get a complete spin. Uh, spin torque efficiency. So which means the something will be more, right? Then the power dissipation will also be more. Uh, more or less, but it's rather complicated. It depends on uh, you know a lot of things. You, um, you of course, if uh, spin diffusion is shorter, then you need a smaller thickness for the spin hole layer. Then for the same spin, uh, spin uh, for the same right current density, then you will need smaller right current because it's thinner. So the small, the basically the smaller spin diffusion is the I always say the better because you just need a, a very thin spin hole layer. And then if the spin hole layer is saying, that might mean that you, you, you can look at this one. This is the S is the ratio of the shunt current over the right current, the useful right current. So if you have a smaller spin diffusion, then the heavy metal layer can be smaller then actually S will be larger. Right, yep. Yeah, S will be larger, but uh, you know, the, the volume of the, the, the spin hole layer will be smaller. So kind of they can cancel out like that. It's not very, uh, it's hard to say, yeah. Yeah, I see, yeah. yeah. So 
uh, question is, uh, once you prepare multi-layers and then um, are they uniform uh, or there is alloy formation? Do you have any idea? Uh, if I make uh, multi-layers... Like you have a PT hafnium and a PT titanium. You have they, in like uh, 0.25 nanometers. Uh, you mean the? I, I think the filaments were pretty uniform, but you know the insertion layer is only 0.2 nanometer, which is uh, less than one atomic layer. So it's like the dusting, dirt doping like that. See, so it's, it's not the super lattice. Not super lattice. So okay, just like super lattice, but the titanium and half half layer insertion layers. I'm very sad, it's less than one more layer. Right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, is there any other question? Uh, Eric, please go ahead with your question. Hi, uh, Eric Hi, Antonio Eric. from UCI. So thanks for the nice talk. Um, a few years ago, uh, I think Felix Casanova's group um, mm -hmm. used lateral spin valves to look how the spin hall angle or spin hall effect was changing in platinum um, going right. from clean to dirty regime. Uh, they didn't look at the spin torque efficiencies, but do your spin hall angles as a yeah. function of resistivity uh, match up well with their work? Uh, yeah, I certainly uh, know that paper, and um, that's nice work. But in that technique, the uncert they have very large uncertainty in the data point, so they were not able to identify this uh, this variation of the spin hall connectivity as function of resistivity. Um, yeah, I don't have the plot here. If you look up, look look back in that paper you will say you know the everybody is super large is is even larger than the magnitude of spin hawk activity itself so you you couldn't distinguish the, the this behavior here and um, harmonic response is quite reliable that and um, everybody is, is very small and we are able to identify this one that's i think that's the difference Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, any other question? Okay, if there's no more question, I want to thank the speaker again, and I want to thank all of you for participating.